WCBI News at 10 starts now. Police issue a missing endangered alert for Lamar County woman. Thanks for joining us tonight at 10. 35 year old Brittany Pennington. She was last seen Saturday, according to her friends. And you see here she has blonde hair and has a tattoo across her chest. Police issued the missing alert just after 730 this evening. If you know where Brandy is, you're asked to call your local police. Well, it has been nearly two months since an Alabama man first went missing. 48 year old Roger Taylor of Lamar County. He's not been seen since March. Our Quentin Smith speaks with Taylor's family. Quentin, have family members or law enforcement gotten any clues on what might have happened? No, Scott, the family says there hasn't been any breaks in the case to track down where Taylor might be. Two days after Taylor was reported missing, his car was found in Monroe County, but there still has been no sign of Taylor. However, family members do believe someone knows something, and tonight they're pleading for them to come forward. That is in the background. As Alyssa Taylor flips through a scrapbook filled with pictures of she and her father, a sense of emptiness starts to set in. It's been bad not knowing. Not knowing where he's at, if he's okay, if he's dead or alive, or whatever could have happened to him. It's been horrible. It's been 58 days since Roger Taylor was last seen. 58 days of pure anguish and uneasiness for his family. I feel like somebody has seen him or has talked to him or knows where he's at. And I feel they need to come forward. If they don't feel comfortable going to the police, they're more than welcome to come to me. The 48-year-old was first reported missing on March 10th. According to his daughter, Taylor and his wife got into an argument on the night he went missing. After the argument, their daughter drove his wife to her house in Monroe County, Mississippi. Well, not long afterwards, Taylor then left his home in Lamar County, Alabama, got in his car, and drove after them. From my understanding, my father had went to go pick Kitty back up his wife back up and he got lost. Once he made it across state lines, Taylor then sent a text message to his daughter telling her he was lost, only to never be heard from again. A few days later, his car was found on Blair Cemetery Road, which is not far from the home of his youngest daughter, which is where was he was going. There a few footprints around the vehicle and that's it. They just look like they vanished. They're assumed to be my father's, but there's no way to verify it. Investigators spent over a week searching the area where the car was found, but still couldn't locate Taylor. Now, Alyssa is pleading for more answers and closure. To either be able to wrap my arms around my daddy's neck again and tell him I love him, or to be able to lay my daddy to rest and have somewhere to visit him. Either one would bring me great closure and great comfort, because this not knowing is horrible. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Now, Taylor does have a physical issue, and family mem members believe that could have played a major factor in this incident. Scott? They get some answers. Thank you very much, Quentin, for that report. Time now to toss things over to meteorologist Jacob Riley. We'll get a first look at our forecast. Hey there, Jacob. Hey there, Scott. Calm night out across the area. Currently in Tupelo, sitting at 72 degrees. Wind calm, dew point at 63, so it's a little bit muggy out there. That mugginess is going to continue as we head on throughout the rest of your night, dropping down to about 60. Nothing really to worry about. Quiet tonight as we head on to your Wednesday night, though. That's whenever these strong to severe storms are going to begin to pull their way on into our area. That severe threat really arriving on Thursday. Areas in the yellow have that greatest chance of seeing severe weather. I'll have more on that severe threat coming up a little later in the show. Well, the Columbus Police Department promotes three officers at tonight's council meeting. One sergeant was promoted to lieutenant and two corporals were promoted to sergeant. Our Cash Matt Locke, he attended the ceremony. He now joins us live in the studio with more on the story. Hey, Cash. That's right, Scott. Well, three officers decided to take on more responsibility and a higher ranking without an increase in salary. One particular officer says it's not about the money, but rather the community she protects and serves. Sergeant Amanda Burrell has dreamed of becoming a police officer ever since she was a little girl. I remember in the heat of the night, that was like my favorite show. And I did not know until I started watching that show that women could be police officers. And I knew from the time I was five years old that this is what my calling was. Now she has almost 19 years of experience under her belt and a promotion from corporal to sergeant. 
It'll be a lot more responsibility. They'll be responsible for whole, the whole shift and activities that go on while they're, they'll, they'll be making executive decision in my absence. Typically, with more responsibility comes more pay. However, the current budget simply doesn't allow for any pay increases for CPD officers, but Sergeant Burrell doesn't seem to mind. The pay thing, that's okay. I want to help people. I want to make a difference. I want to be that positive influence on that little girl that wants to be just like me. That to me is, is outstanding that they want to take this responsibility because it's, again it's going to be more responsibility. It's a lot more responsibility than they had. But they're stepping up to the plate. And the, the other thing that's going to be a benefit is they're gaining executive experience in this new position. Columbus Police Chief Fred Shelton says promoting from within the department will have a positive impact. The community are getting three of their own, three people that have worked their way up through the ranks, that has a working knowledge of this community and in the, how the department works, so and that's good. So we didn't have to go outside and get some people that didn't know anything about this community, but these are homegrown supervisors that, have been, that are part of this community. As for Sergeant Burrell, she's got her eyes on the next step in her career. And this is only the start for me. Hopefully, before I retire, I can make lieutenant. Sergeant Burrell says she only knows of one other woman in Columbus who has achieved the rank of lieutenant. Scott? New tonight at 10, a company that makes custom electronic systems for the government and private sector is investing a half a million dollars into its Tupelo operations. Hyperion Technology Group is moving from its 12,000 square foot space to a 48,000 square foot facility and a former beverage distribution center. The city of Tupelo is buying the building and leasing it to Hyperion. Now, Hyperion plans to add 25 new employees with the expansion, and, the, and they hope to be in the new facility in early summer. The Mississippi needs more doctors. Without them, it restricts access to care for many in the Magnolia State. As Courtney Ann Jackson explains, the need is even greater in rural communities. If you live in a metro area, you may have never thought about what happens when a doctor moves or even retires. It's a different story in rural Mississippi. There are so many physicians, there are so many counties that don't have a physician. And also there's a lot of counties that have physicians that have been serving, that have been practicing for 30 plus years. If you don't have anyone that's going to base it, like come in and take their place, that means there's going to be a shortage of health care to serve this area. That's what the Mississippi Rural Physician Scholarship Program tries to combat. So if I get the scholarship for two years, I owe the state of Mississippi two years on my service. But fourth year med student Griffin Metcalf doesn't want to stop there. I do know that my desire is uh, my wife and I want to go somewhere that we can stay long term and not um, not just a few years and then leave. We want to be able to invest in the community and be able to plant, uh, lay down roots. More than 30 doctors who have completed the program are now practicing in small communities statewide. By 2020, that will nearly double. I think I've become more aware of the financial, uh, socioeconomic, diver just the, the, the obstacles that are in place that are more than just medicine. They're more than just learning the science behind treating patients. They're um, social factors that have to be uh, worked with and managed as well. Metcalf doesn't know where he'll plant those roots after his residency, but he is encouraged by the chance to help a community in need. Instead of having the attitude that, well, these, these areas can't be helped, um, to be proactive about it. And I think that that's one of the benefits of this program. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. Tomorrow's the last day. It's going to be dry for the next couple of days. Storms return tomorrow evening, and they're going to last as we go on into your Mother's Day weekend, potentially even to the beginning of next week. Coming up after the break, I'll let you know when those severe storms arrive into our area. First alert, AccuWeather forecast with meteorologist Jacob Riley. Well, Tuesday was a wonderful day across the area, starting you off here with a, a time-lapse view in Louisville, Mississippi on our Alpha Insurance time-lapse camera. You see those high cirrus clouds in the sky, that sun sinking below the horizon, making for a beautiful sunset here. And we're going to see those clouds increase as we go on throughout your Wednesday. Tomorrow, we're going to see those showers and storms return Wednesday night as well. And once they arrive, that unsettled pattern is going to stick around at least through Sunday this weekend. Here's that weather maker, the first part of it producing tornadoes out in the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma. That's going to pull our way as we head on into your Wednesday night and into your Thursday. But for Wednesday, we will remain mostly dry, topping out here in the middle to upper 80s across the area, just a little bit above average. Those clouds will increase as we head into your Wednesday afternoon. 
and Wednesday night. Back out to our west, though, we're watching this line here of showers and storms. That's what's going to pull through the Arklatex region on Wednesday, producing some damaging winds, hail, maybe even a few tornadoes. Wednesday afternoon and evening, though, that begins to approach the Interstate 55 corridor, bringing us just some showers throughout the day or the evening hours there on Wednesday. No severe weather is expected here. Wednesday, it's Thursday that we're concerned for the potential of severe weather. For Wednesday, though, back across the Arklatex, you see that level three enhanced risk of severe storms. The yellow, that's a level two. Green, a level one. All of that remaining on off to our west. However, as we go into Thursday, that's when that severe threat is going to ramp up here for northeast Mississippi and western Alabama. There's that line beginning to sink on into our area. This is right around noon on Thursday. That's when severe storms will begin to fire. As they pull on through that our area, they could produce some damaging winds, small hail, maybe even an isolated tornado or two cannot be ruled out. But by Thursday night, that severe threat does come to an end. Areas in the yellow here, you're in a level two slight risk. Again, the main threat of that being damaging winds. Another thing we're really concerned about is the heavy rainfall. Some more flash flooding will be possible as we go throughout this weekend. So remember, if you come across a flooded roadway, please do not pass through it. Turn around, do not drown. As we head on through your Friday, though, you can see those showers and storms here really just feeding on through our area. That pattern is going to continue as we head on into your Mother's Day on Sunday. It will eventually leave out by Monday, but before it does, look at that huge swath, three to five inches possibly across portions of our area, maybe even upwards as much as six inches before all is said and done with on Monday. But taking a look at your weekend, Mother's Day, it's going to be nasty. Highs there in the upper 70s, though, so things will cool off a little bit. And as we head into next week, the sunshine returns with highs in the low 80s. Heads up for your morning commute, drivers. Some drivers in eastern Lowndes County, you may need to leave a little early in the morning. Pleasant Hill Road will be closed from 8 a.m. until noon. There will be no through traffic from Highway 50 East to Tabernacle Road on Pleasant Hill. Stay with us. We'll be right back. They make a lasting impact every day. Teachers touch lives. In recognition of National Teacher Appreciation Day, we spotlight an educator who's been in the classroom for 40 years. Stephanie Poole has her story. Vera Miles has taught math for 39 years. I love teaching. I like to work with the kids. Um, I like to see them succeed. This is her last year. Mrs. Miles is retiring at the end of the school year. She says a lot has changed in 40 years. They have more technology, more, they're exposed to much more uh, as opposed to when I first started as, and now, so we have to stay up to par. So it is a continuous process. But one thing that hasn't changed, she says, is the amount of money teachers are paid. It's too late for me <laughs> as far as getting the pay raise because I'm going to go home. I think that the teachers deserve as much as they can get because, first of all, we teach everybody. So if we teach the doctors, the lawyers, and tell them how they do, are to do their job, and then we reward them with big, luscious salaries, then the people that teach us them, we barely pay them. This session, Mississippi lawmakers approved a $1,500 pay raise, but Mrs. Miles says they could do a lot better. You know, we thank you for the $1,500, but they deserve so much more. As her four-decade teaching career winds down, she's already planning her retirement. Right now, all I want to do is get me somewhere and rest. <laughs> Her students say there's no doubt about Mrs. Miles' passion for teaching. The veteran teacher says she just wants the Mississippi legislature to show that same passion when it comes to paying educators. We teach their most valuable commodity, their children. And without us, I mean, their kids are not going to be educated. And when we actually send them into all of the various areas, if everybody else can pay their people, then look like they would care enough to pay us. Don't forget about the signs. Mrs. Miles says that her grandson will start high school next year and play basketball. She says she plans on following the team. Well, coming up next in sports, only one spot left in the softball state championships. It come down to Smithville or Pine Grove. Highlights from Seminoles Field next in sports. UCDI Sports with Tom Apple. The Diamond Dogs and Rebels meet again on the Diamond this weekend. A lot on the line for both teams, both tied for second in the SEC West. But for Mississippi State, it's also about keeping the bragging rights. 
including the Bulldogs 8-1 Governor's Cup win back on April 23rd. MSU has won nine of its last ten against Ole Miss. Jake Mangum and Dustin Skelton say having the Governor's Cup before the weekend series helps with the scouting report. I like that we got to our or to their bullpen. You know, uh, they brought their bullpen in, and we saw some of their you know good arms, and we were able to you know and hit them pretty well. So I think that's a big step for it. Um, we've seen their hitters in the game before now, so we have an idea how they're going to line up. So it, you know, it's the first time in my four years that the Governor's Cup came before the weekend series. So. So we'll see how it is. First pitch strikes, get the leadoff guy out, and uh, really just work from there. As, as many times as we can get the guy, leadoff guy out, that'll, that'll really help. The Bulldogs have a midweek matchup with Memphis tomorrow. We'll hear more from Ole Miss on the matchup tomorrow as well. A historic day for Mississippi State and Ole Miss softball. The SEC releasing the all-conference awards and a new program mark set for both teams. Mississippi State with three first-team all-SEC selections. That's a program record. Kat Moore, Mia Davidson, and Fale Lua to the first team. Anna Kate Seegers named all-freshman SEC team. Four Ole Miss Rebels named to the all-SEC team as well. Program record for the Rebels. Headlined by Kylan Becker to the first team for the second time in her career. Molly Jacobson named to the second team, Tate Whitley, all freshman team, and Kaylee Horton becomes the first Ole Miss Rebel to be named to the all defensive team. The SEC tournament begins Wednesday in College Station. High school baseball. Both teams looking to lock up a spot in the state championship. Starkville Academy taking on Starkville. Hart Heritage taking on Starkville Academy. It's a 4 1 lead for the Vols, and Garrett Lewis says, not today. We're not going out today. Heritage leading the series 1-0 as of game two. But then here come the Vols trying to add a little bit more up 4-1. Griffin Little with a base knock, but he'd be left on the bags. Then Heritage down to three more outs. Still down 4-1. to one. Reed Huskinson tries to get the rally started. Base hit for Reed, but that's all in the bottom of the seventh. Vols would force a decisive game three with the 4-1 to one game two win. And then in that decisive game three, at last check, this game was still going on. The rivals taking on, taking it the distance. Patriots and Volunteers, one win gets you to the title game. Vols, Vols would draw first blood. Cooper McNeil tags one to deep left center field. It would drop at the wall. Two RBI double for McNeil is going to bring home two Vols. Howell Archer racing across. The man is pumped up. He loves runs. Two nothing Vols after the top half of the first inning. But back comes Heritage. Davis Fitch with a laser beam somehow corralled that short. He'd be out at first, but the sack ground out is going to bring home K.J. Smith. So a 2-1 S.A. lead. But then Reed Huskinson, liner to third. Throw to first is off. Reed's going to turn it into a double. This game is 12-9 Heritage Academy in the bottom of the sixth. We'll have that score on our website, WCBI.com, as well as Sunrise tomorrow morning. Game two between Pine Grove and Smithville. Smithville advances to the championship game with a W. Bottom second scoreless game, not anymore. Lizzie Meeks Matt, to Maddie Mason hits one down the third base line for a single. Next batter, Harley Hatley. Oppo brings home. Pine Grove throws one out by at third, barely missing a whole Chris Bolton at third. But the Knowles would take advantage and score a run on the air next inning. Andy Brook Morgan hits one to deep left center field. Just out of the grab of the center fielder, Knowles score another run. Smithville defeats Pine Grove 4 to nothing. Lady Knowles sweep the series. They're off to their first state championship since 2016. The Calhoun City Wildcats one win away from a state championship appearance. Wildcats dominate on the road at Lake 11 to 1. Game 2 at Calhoun City at 5 p.m. tomorrow. That's it for sports. That's it your weather. Is Main rain go away. It has Agreed. worked its way back into our forecast once again. Sounds like a broken record this year. We have strong storm potential on Thursday. Those rain and showers and storm chances lasting through Mother's Day. Monday and Tuesday looking good though, Scott. But don't let it damper your Mother's Day. No. Still celebrate your mothers. Yes. Just might have to they deserve it. figure out a way to <laughs> do it indoors. All right. Thanks, Jacob. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.